Welcome to the quick start for Twilight Render, Introduction to Using Twilight Render tutorial. We're going to start off by going to the components, typing in Ando Pulitzer, and inserting this into our model. You click on the little icon there and pop it in at the origin after it loads. Zoom extents, and here we can see the Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts by Tadao Ando. We're going to do a little quick recreation of the classic renderings you see often on the web when you're looking at architectural renderings. When you click on the little man with the X underneath of him, that will guarantee that your camera has the verticals up and down. Twilight Render has a great scene framing tool. If you click its icon of the binoculars, it gives you this handy little tool when you left click on any object, it'll rotate the whole scene about that one point. It comes in very handy, but if you want to make sure your verticals are straight, you need to use this little guy with the X under him. Then you can move your camera forward and back with the walk tool in SketchUp. For quickest results, for test rendering, we'll want to set the resolution quite low and use a preliminary render setting. The more threads or the more cores that your computer has, the better. Uh, first, want to choose some a dynamic sun settings so let's put the sun at September and set the time around to 6 o'clock, 6.10, something like that. I think this looks pretty good. Let's do a quick rendering and see what it just looks like out, out of default uh, SketchUp. Nothing special really. Um, so now the first thing that I want to look at is if there's any bottom to this pond, this reflection pool, and there it appears not to be. So we're going to go in there and just copy the water layer down, about 25 centimeters down, so that we have a bottom to our pool, so that way our reflection pool works properly. Twilight Render is a physics-based rendering engine, so you'll want to have the correct scale for your model, and just remember that the materials are going to act like they would in real life, so uh, reflecting pools need a bottom to them. Let's update our scene, and let's uh, work on this water material now. First thing we want to do maybe is apply some kind of texture to the bottom of the pond here. Let's choose the river rock 4 inch underground cover materials and paint that on. That'll look good. Go back to our original scene here. Now we can set our water. Go under glass and find the water setting. We will set the bump to be controlled by the SketchUp texture while we set the color of the water to be white, which is clear. Let's set the alpha to be 3%. So it has just a little bit of color to it. Let's resize this so that our material preview will render a little more quickly. And let's go check out what it's going to look like in the preliminary. We should close our groups by clicking in the sky a few times. Now we can hit play. And we see the water is looking pretty good already. It's reflecting the windows and such. Now let's take a look at the glass. For architectural glass, be sure to choose the architectural glass template common. Uncheck Cast Shadows and choose the color to be white or clear. Since we've already used it once, it's now easy to grab. And once again, set the alpha to 0, 1, 2, or 3, something low. And I give it just a little bit of color, number 3. And hit play. Now we can see that it's now transparent and looking reflective. Once more, let's look at the water. We'll control the bump this time with a procedural material. All the procedural materials are based on mathematical algorithms. And all these procedural materials you'll find are very strong in the bump channel and powerful materials. So let's set this to 0 0.002 at Perlin Noise. And now you can see it's looking pretty good. I think we can improve it. We need to adjust the scale to be about 10 times bigger. 
you can think of this number as the denominator in a fraction for the scale. So if we set it to point 0.1, that will increase the apparent scale by 10. As you can see, the result is a nice soft ripple in the pond with the scale increased by 10. Let's set the concrete to stone natural template and set the color of the bump to be the SketchUp texture. SketchUp texture is good, but if we want it to be stronger, we can always set it to about a size 2. In most cases, 1 is plenty. You will want to avoid any bump strength over 5 unless the texture has a lot of medium grays in it. For this texture, we could just choose SketchUp as the bump, but it's wise to use the templates like Stone Natural because you can change the IOR or the shininess, IOR being the index of refraction. Now let's check out these mullions. It looks like it's a shiny dark paint, so we'll go paint gloss and leave it at that. Let's go back to our scene and render. It's looking good. Now you can see the bump on the concrete walls for sure. What else can we do to improve this scene? We need to go to the monochrome view. Always check your back faces. Then you right click on each face and choose reverse faces or set up a shortcut as I've done in SketchUp so you can quickly reverse any face. Let's open the Edit Environment dialog and choose Spherical Sky. This allows us to put a sky with trees and clouds in it. You can download these in the resources section at twilightrender.com's community forums if you have a purchased license. Go to brightness and adjust it to 1.5 and let's take a look. Now we can see the sky reflecting down in the reflecting pool, making it a whole lot better. Now I think we're basically done if we add a little vignette and then adjust the temperature up for the new temperature to make it warmer. Give a slight bloom so that it's uh, got a little softness to it. And maybe we want to increase the exposure. It's looking just a little dark. If you want to increase the exposure but reduce the dark areas, you can reduce the gamma just a little bit. It's already looking pretty good to me. Of course, there's a lot more things we could fix, but the main one is that we can see through the glass to the trees beyond while uh, actually there's a wall there so something strange is happening if you notice in this model there are some section cuts what's happening is Twilight Render is actually rendering the section though you couldn't tell from that view if we render it from the back side we'll see that these two sections are rendering just fine and that's why the back walls seem to be missing in order to control sections in Twilight they are controlled by layers Turning the layer on and off upon which a section resides will control the visibility of that section in your rendering. So let's create a layer called Section Cuts. And we can just drop our sections right onto the Section Cuts layer and turn that layer off. Here's the second one. Drop it onto that layer. Now these Section Cuts are off, but they've turned back on when I hit the Section 1. That's because if you look in the Scene Manager here, the sections were on when I created that scene so we'll turn that section layer off and update the scene that will leave the sections off every time we go to that scene from in the future for rendering it now when we render we can see that the wall is indeed showing up and now the glass automatically looks better as well but I know you're thinking now it's time for Kung Fu Panda if you type in peach tree in the components and you'll find this beautiful tree created by Ganya D. Unfortunately it has some very bright pink petals on it, so let's go in and take a look at that. We can change the name to be petals, and we can change the saturation of this. You don't want any color, including white or black, to be fully saturated when you're rendering it. And let's lighten up the color a little bit so. 90% is a generally a, a good option if you want a full saturated color. Now maybe uh, we don't want this tree intersecting with adjacent geometry. 
So let's scale about uh, opposite point to holding the shift key down when you use the scale tool. It always helps in SketchUp to know your shortcuts to jump to these tools quickly. I don't click on the tools because I have them all set up as shortcuts. And then when we render this, you can see that peach tree is looking really nice in this space. Don't forget you can try the exploration render. The better your computer, the faster the rendering and exploration render. It renders on the CPU and not on the graphics card. The graphics card is controlling your SketchUp view while the exploration render is being rendered on your CPU. So if you have a quad core or better, uh, you should have a pretty good exploration render. But if there are a lot of reflective surfaces in the scene, it can slow it down. Or if there's a lot of extra geometry in the file, it can slow it down as well. That's why you might want to use the scene composition tool for twilight render. Let's set up our scene that way. The red lines show you the outer edges of the resolution you've chosen. And for your final rendering for exteriors, you'll want to use the preset 08 exterior daytime rendering. You'll see it's quite nice even after only four minutes here. Here's the gamma set to one. And let's change the vignette. It's too dark, so let's change the hotspot to one on the vignette, and now it's lightened. That's looking quite good. I hope you're happy with it as well. If you would like any further help with Twilight Render, please join us on the community forums. Be sure to check out our other tutorials, both here and on our website.